from Radagast to Radmobile, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Ken Knapsack. My entire nerd life is built to this moment. I'm excited to be here. Great. Determined and stern. Uh, we also have Emma Fife. Hello, it's great to be back. Uh, you know, this yellow couch, I just couldn't stay away. I just felt like it's just, I just really feel home here. It's very 70s decor. Yeah. I'm feeling the vibe. Yeah, it's nice and warm yeah. and destiny draws you back. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Michelle Wynn Bradley. Hello, I'm not sure why I'm here, but I'm excited to talk about nerd stuff. <laughs> Great. Well, that's why you're here. That, that's you got that's it. Nailed you it. Nailed that's that. it. Uh, well, Emma has played before, but I have. Uh, the two of you have not. The rules are very simple. I'll explain for you and for any new viewers at home. Uh, these are statements. These are false, incorrect statements about the things that you know and love. It's up to you to find the thing that's wrong with it, buzz in and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually. If you don't say that, I won't give you the point and it will break my heart. And you can interrupt me at any point. You don't need to wait till the question is over like a polite individual. You can just <laughs> jump right in. There's no polite sportsmanship in, in no. nerd competition. No, I mean, it's just like, hey, hey, shut up, shut up. You said something <laughs> exactly. wrong. Uh, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> Let's do it. How, how do you it. feeling? How's everyone Great. feeling? So ready. <laughs> I, I am more nervous than I thought because you've put like a detonator in my <laughs> yeah. hand. Yes. One of these does explode. One of these <laughs> does make something explode. I'm afraid of breaking it. Yeah. yeah. So You're like pressing it and the it's light's not, not going yours. on. It's like, yes. what the hell? And like, like meanwhile, like, it's like miles when you away. It's like Jeopardy contestants and you can see they're trying yes. to buzz it. Yeah. <laughs> the buzzer just not working. I'll see that sometimes when people are playing because like, uh, you know, like I'll see someone buzz in, the light will go, but I'll also see yeah. someone just like a half second too yeah. late and be like, yes. oh, what the hell? <laughs> Why isn't it doing anything? Uh, it's a real bummer when you can see that like both people know, know it. And it's no. like, yeah, sorry. That's how it goes. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll jump right in. We'll do our first question here. Okay. Uh, this first one is about Harry Potter. Thestrals are skeletal horses with bat-like wings. Of course, not every wizard realizes this, since Thestrals are only visible to wizards who have witnessed death. They are often considered omens of misfortune, which is among the many reasons they are generally kept away from the Hogwarts students. Oh, actually. Yes, Michelle. <laughs> <yes, for sure. laughs> they are not kept away from the Hogwarts students. They are um, actually, how many times I say that? <laughs> they are um, actually uh, used to transport them from, the, I believe it's the, the, the end of the train to the school. That's correct. Yes, that's a point for Michelle. <laughs> Dabs all the way. <laughs> I have already wow. learned something. Uh, this show is value to my life now. I've yeah. learned things. I knew one thing. I'm <laughs> very excited. Look, we'll have some fun, but it's also educational. Yes. Um, uh, that feels like a real harsh way to welcome students into the new <laughs> right, school year. Right. Like, it's hey, like, just a reminder, mm, you've seen death exactly. in your life. It's like, Harsh reminder, your mom is dead and you saw her get murdered. Yeah. Is, is, is it about witnessing the death or just like yeah, having yeah, death no, in no, your no. life? No, 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 you have to have Someone seen Someone has to have died death. in yes. your arms right. then you get to speak. Exactly. Yeah. See so someone like, die. Yeah. yeah. And then every school year from then on out, it's exactly. like, hey, before you get to focusing on your studies, <laughs> you know, if you're like, hey, new year, new me, yeah. I'm gonna look, just like crack potions this year. It's like, <laughs> just a reminder, here's a freaking scary horse <laughs> yeah. monster yeah. and uh, people are. you love have died. That's all, great, cool, enjoy your school year. Yeah. Well, that's a point for Michelle. Good job. Good job. <laughs> this next one's a wrestling question. Oh. The New Day are known for their rather unique style. The trio often wears unicorn-themed clothing, including unicorn horns on their head. They performed the fusion dance from Dragon Ball Z during a match. They have a trombone named Francesca 2 Turbo. They even have a real cereal based on them called Bootios and a book titled The Book of Booty. Shake it, love it, never be it. Hmm. Ken. Um, actually, I feel I have to answer this because I'm a wrestling fan, but uh, I think, oh my gosh, I, uh, um, um, actually, I think it's just Francesca 2 is the trombone? No. Uh, incorrect, no. God! Hmm. Yeah. They both? <laughs> um, uh, actually, they did perform the fusion dance for Dragon Ball Z, but it was not during a match. Uh, incorrect. <laughs> Um, actually, there's not three of them, there's only two of them. No, no there's no, definitely no, no. three of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will say, I will say, Emma, you were, you were getting close. Oh, uh, okay. Because fusion is the two people. Oh, Ken. <laughs> um, actually, that's not the actual dance they performed. It's another one <laughs> from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, <laughs> called it, the, give me a dance <laughs> from Dragon Ball there Z. Are, there's so many dances in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the other ones. Um, actually, it wasn't exactly the fusion dance from Dragon Ball Z because that's only done with two people, <laughs> and, and there's three of them. Well, okay, so here's the thing. We're gonna make it God really difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I guess you you have kind of stumbled into kind the, the correction, which is that they did not perform the fusion dance uh -huh. at all. So uh, you know what? I'll go. I'm gonna go ahead and give you the point. I'm trying to think if like if anyone has any more. I was trying to think. Like, would anyone more be able to like give us more detail? But I'm, I'm seeing a lot of grimacing faces on the couch. So it's like I don't think we will. So I'm I gonna go ahead. Okay. Okay. I'll give you the point. Uh, so they didn't uh, perform. Uh, oh, um, actually, I don't think this is a wrestling question. I think it's a Dragon Ball Z. Question. <laughs> and I'm gonna file a complaint with the office. You know what? That's a, that's actually a, that's a very fair criticism of this question. Uh, so they didn't perform the fusion dance, but Seamus and Cesaro did. Did perform the fusion um, dance. And the New Day did at one. point Point, pop out of a giant box of bootios dressed uh, oh. uh, in Dragon Ball Saiyan, arm, Saiyan armor, go. but we have conflated those uh, into multiple being into being thing. like one big oh. thing. That's yes. what happens, though. Like that, I feel like that is a lot of the the source of all nerd strife is just like multiple things becoming a single <laughs> crossover entity. Crossover events? Yeah, yeah. just crossover yeah. events. Crossover events are a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Also, oh. wrestling is wild, y'all. Like, what? <laughs> 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 Not giving yeah. up. <laughs> Uh, well, great. I'll give that point. That point's going to go to Emma. <laughs> Narrowly oh, sweet. That answer, too. I've got to get on the board here. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of start uh, muttering to myself. <laughs> well, there's, there's still plenty more questions, plenty more chances there to, to that. Uh, this next question is about the movie Pacific Rim. Piloting a Jaeger by yourself can be fatal. As scientist Newton Geisler explains, Jaegers are so large they need two brains to move around, like a dinosaur. To achieve this, two pilots share a neural link called drift, which allows them to jointly control the robot together. Huh. <laughs> Ken oh. very slowly buzzed in, but was beaten by Michelle. Oh, uh, oh my answer's not great. Um, actually, the, it's the, the theory does not revolve around dinosaurs having two brains, because that doesn't make any sense. I feel like the dinosaur part is not part of this at all. That's um, my, that's my you know guess. what? You're you're kind of you're close enough that I'll, I'll I'll maybe give it to you. That is a line. It is a line that is said in the movie. Um, mm. But at that point, he is talking about the kaiju and not uh, uh. not the Jaegers. Um, <laughs> you sort of backed your way into it, but uh, you are point. you are correct in that uh, that he's not describing how Jaegers work in that particular yeah, moment. Yeah, and I knew all mm. of that, so uh, totally knew we'll it. Take it. <laughs> I'm getting it now. We can think ourselves into the right. Yeah. Answer. You can, you can, can absolutely and, and just sort of you can to Michelle and Emma. Because I'm now I'm in. Yeah, now you I'm can in. you can totally like machete bushwhack your <laughs> yeah. way into a thing. It's like I don't know what's through here, but I yeah. think it, this is the way to go. Yes. Perfect. Um, this is a very stupid thing of from me, which is like as I was watching this movie, this was the moment that where I like that took me out of it. And even in the moment, I was like, this shouldn't affect me as much as it does. But it, there was a moment in the movie where he was like, ah, it's, it's like I see. There's uh, they have two brains. They have a brain in, in their head and a brain in their posterior, just like dinosaurs. And I was watching that going oh. like, that's not true of dinosaurs. That's yeah. not how dinosaurs yeah, work. So he was saying in the movie that dinosaurs have two brains. Correct. He was saying butt. that kaiju have two brains <laughs> just the way <laughs> dinosaurs, dinosaurs do. do. And yeah. what is, it's a butt brain. It's a butt brain. Yeah. A butt, a butt brain. brain. For a while, th this was a theory about specifically Stegosaurus that uh. like people thought that Stegosaurus was so large okay. and there was oh, this like science. big like hip pocket <laughs> sure. that pe for they a while thought... people were like, oh, they must have two brains. That's why there's this cavity in here. That's how like they they managed to move their body. With and it was oh. like, it lasts for a while before people were like, no, that's yeah, dumb. That doesn't make that any sense. Like, that they're like, you know what? Most living creatures have a central nervous system <laughs> right. that, like, you have nerves that go all through every area mm -hmm. of your body. In the case of dinosaurs, tails and butts included, yeah. that controls everything. <laughs> but they're like, nah, dinosaurs, they gotta have a whole separate brain. Dinosaurs do all their, their thinking in their second brain, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, uh, point, for, point for Michelle there. Big lead, big lead. <laughs> Dang. Uh, this question is a fan question. So this was submitted oh. by a fan. Uh, this comes to us from Yuri Kana. Thank you, Yuri Kana, for this question. And this is about the Fate Stay series. The servants who fight on behalf of contestants in the Holy Grail Wars are manifestations of legendary figures, like King Arthur and Gilgamesh. However, some less expected figures appear as well, like Christopher Columbus, Buddha, Abigail Williams, Alexander Hamilton, Nikola Tesla, Helena Blavatsky, Caligula. Um, yeah. Actually, I don't think Alexander Hamilton shows up in the Fate Stay series. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're, you're saying that like it's ludicrous, but also all these other ones are true. Listen, but the thing is, is the, the Fate Stay series is bonkers. Sure. All those other ones are absolutely true. But Alexander Hamilton, before 
Hamilton, the musical. No I one gave a shit. He <laughs> was not famous enough yeah. for the Japanese to put him in the Fate Stay Night nice series. It's just, just, it's just logic. Ludicrous. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just science. Hey, you know what? That's fair. I appreciate <laughs> the logic. Uh, is, is the series still going on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh. it will never end. They never end. Do you expect that Hamilton will make an appearance I now in a like post Hamilton it, world? I, I think if Hamilton does a world tour, <laughs> then, like, if Lin Manuel Miranda is yeah. like, you Keep know what, listen. Going. Listen, I'm gonna put all my money into the Asian market, then Alexander <laughs> Hamilton will be the main character. Yeah, yeah. I'm huge in Japan. Serving in yeah. the next phase, next phase of Hamilton. <laughs> it's bonkers. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like tournaments and, and all of these manifestations, as you say, of historical figures. And swords. And swords. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, um, actually, it was based off of a video game first. The very first thing that had was a video true. game. It was like a dating sim game, and then it got turned into an anime, and then went backwards into more games, and then it's like split up into little side areas, and there's just like, yeah. there's even a spin off where they just cook. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've seen it. Also, Wait, when you say they, do you mean like the historical manifestations or like the, the humanoid the versions? Humanoid yeah. Version. Oh. I thought wrestling was weird, but this is, <laughs> this is taking this is the cake. This is something cake. else. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's all, everything's really weird. Everything's yeah. weird as hell. Um, well, point for Emma for that thank one. Uh, and thank you again, Yuri Kana, for that question. <laughs> Well, this brings us to our first shiny question oh, of the right. game. Shiny questions, like shiny Pokemon, are worth mm -hmm. the same amount. Nice. They're just a little different and a little bit rarer. Cool. So uh, this is a game called Order Up, uh, where we want you to put things in a specific order. In this case, it is uh, arranging spaceships in order of size. So whoever gets the most correct will get the point for this one. Okay. Uh, all right, go ahead and flip these over. Let's take a look at these. Oh. All right, cool. Uh, so I decided to go with the Cylon Raider first, the okay. attacker, uh, then the United Planet Star Cruiser, then the, by and large, Axiom City Ship, then the uh, Executor, Super Star Destroyer, and then the uh, the Borg Cube is how I went. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Emma, let's see what you got here. Uh, so my answers are surprisingly similar to Ken's. Okay. <laughs> I promise I did not cheat, but I think the only thing we have switched is I had the attacker first, okay. and then the Cylon Raider, then the planet starship, then the city ship, then the executor class star destroyer, and then the Borg assimilation cube. Very good. And then Michelle, let's let's see what you got. Uh, mm -hmm. The word cube sounded really small to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. There. Attacker did planet star cruiser next because I was like, it's probably like UFO size, like standard. Um, Cylon standard, Raider. You know, <laughs> the standard yeah. UFO oh, size we're all familiar with. It's got a small little trunk, but mm -hmm. enough that you, for like when you're yeah. getting around, totally. uh, you I can was... drive your friends around. Yeah. <laughs> Cylon Raider because it had wings, and I thought the wingspan would make it bigger than the other thing. Yeah, we're going by bird rules. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. rules. Executor class star destroyer. There's like a lot of windows, so I thought maybe there's like a lot of people. In there is yeah, a lot of windows. Lot of yeah. windows. Yeah. Vader loves then... staring out windows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of all having the there only are corner a lot of offers. Shots of Darth Vader just staring out a window. Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> And then the by and large Axiom City, because it has the word large, large. in it. I thought this God. one is the biggest one. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great All if that of one your was logic is tracking? Yeah. yeah, great. Well, looking at this, I think, Michelle, you got two correct. Uh, <laughs> Emma, I think you got one correct. <laughs> And Ken, I think you also got two, correct? Oh, okay. Three? What? Okay, I got three. Um, uh, great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so our Silent Raider is the <laughs> smallest. Oh, uh, man. Then the attacker, uh, then your standard yep. average size. Uh, I, that's what one. I got was uh, the standard UFO. <laughs> your Borg cube. Uh, mm -hmm. The by and large Axiom ship is from Wally. -E. And then your ginormous um, Star Destroyer. I grossly underestimated the Borg, and I'd like to apologize <laughs> to the Borg, uh, Borg right now. Yeah. Hey, yeah. an admiral job all around, but that point's gonna go to Ken. Yeah, yes, there you fun. go! Yay. Well, we made a whole bunch of mistakes, and luckily you were there to tell us what we got wrong. Here's some of our favorite corrections from you, the viewers. At Tina Cohen Dang says, Dr. Dillamond was a life sciences professor, not a history professor. I'm sorry, we implied otherwise. That's one point for Tina Cohen Dang, but you'll have to go to Oz to get it. And from our exclusive dropout Discord, M Griffin 96 says, um, actually, Lakitu has also appeared in Super Mario 64, not as an enemy, but holding the camera behind Mario as 
the third person perspective. Which bitch says, I'm actually Richard Feynman is my grandpa and Trap pronounced his name incorrectly. It should be pronounced Feynman, not Feynman. I did unfortunately mispronounce that, however you spelled my last name wrong so we're going to call it even. No points all around. Well, uh, our next question is about Game of Thrones. The five competitors for the throne in the War of the Five Kings were Robb Stark, Joffrey Baratheon, Renly Baratheon, Stannis Baratheon, and Balon Greyjoy. In both the TV series and the books, the fighting caused by this feud has continued up to the current story, despite all of these characters now being dead. Um, actually, they're not all dead. You're going to have to be more specific. Um, actually, Balon Greyjoy is not dead. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> um, actually, he, he is he's dead. Definitely, <laughs> he's definitely dead. Yeah, definitely he's dead. dead. Uh, um, actually, is it Stannis who's not dead? He's dead. Um, uh, I, I'm oh, actually, is it Stannis um, actually, dead? Stannis isn't all the way dead. <laughs> he's only mostly dead. <laughs> um, you've, you've hit it closer. You, you got farther away, <laughs> I think. Um, you're not 100% accurate, but I think you're, you might be close enough that I'll give you the point, unless someone can be exactly 100% mm -hmm. accurate here. Um, actually, Stannis Baratheon um, is basically a statue because he has succumbed to grayscale. <laughs> Incorrect. Cool, Incorrect. cool, cool, cool. So this is my wheelhouse, and I'm not even sure. I'm okay. not even yeah. sure. All Something right. about ghosts? No, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So we'll go ahead and give you the point. Um, <laughs> so we points. said that in both the TV show and the books, all these characters oh, are dead. But in point of fact, Stannis is not dead in the books, books oh, yet. The, the uh, <laughs> and I say yet, but I don't know what's going to happen. Darn Maybe it. things will go oh, get wildly and different. The books. Yeah, and the books. Oh, and it. the books. Right yeah. there. Um, that's good. That's Dang good. You're good. That was a good question. That was good. Oh, boy. It's time for some Star Wars expanded universe. Knowledge. Oh, God. oh, legends are the worst things ever. <laughs> They're not Star Wars. They're the worst stuff. Jedi Master Joris Sabeo, the contemporary of Jedi Master Dooku and a friend of Senator Palpatine, eventually fell to the dark side. As a dark Jedi, he obtained a tissue sample from Luke Skywalker's severed hand and created a dark sided clone named Luke Skywalker. It's Luke <laughs> with two U's. That is 100% correct. Yeah. I'm not going to. <laughs> Wait, Luke with two U's? Luke with two U's. Um, yeah. Actually, there's more than two U's in Luke <laughs> Skywalker. There might as well be, yeah, the way we all yeah, yeah. there's not, though. Every, it's like a multiplicity situation. Mm -hmm. They're like yeah, clone, they clones, and then it's more like... Luke clones. They just keep adding more Lukes. Yeah. Like U's <laughs> to the middle of Luke. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, actually, Dooku is not in the Heir to the Empire trilogy of novels written by Timothy Zahn, which this Jedi is in. Uh, that's not what we have on the card, but, but we're going to we're going to check on it. Thanks, check. We'll, we'll check on it. Um, I, I'm kind of saying he's right about that. We said he's a contemporary of, not that they like me, but he is right that Dooku is not a character in that in that storyline. All right, all right, all right. Well, uh, maybe I'll give you a point. I kind of want to see if anyone can figure okay. out what what uh, okay. what's going on here. <laughs> Um, actually, his name was Luke Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> and the third clone was called Luke 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 Skywalker. So you're wrong. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give the point to Ken for, okay. for you know, it's like, it was a little... For being uh, annoying. For being annoying. For being annoying. Say it. Look, being annoying. This whole... This whole show is about being annoying. <laughs> exactly. Um, and also because this question is particularly difficult and annoying. Uh, so the fact that you, you caught us on something else is like, fine, cool. Yeah. Take, uh, take the point. Um, what we were looking for is that it was Joris's clone, Jorus Sebeoth. Right. Uh, oh my god. Not Joris Sebeoth. Okay. Which I know, I know there's a pronunciation thing here too, but the biography that we gave right. uh, for this character described the original Joris sure. Sebeoth and not the clone. Jorus like, Sabeo. Is, you're right, like, you're right. Yeah, in, you're right. In the True. expanded universe, who doesn't have a clone? Like, I feel like the list of, a lot people, of people who are lacking clones. A lot of people. Palpatine also had a son with the third eye called yes, Triclops. Yes, with the Triclops, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not what? a huge fan of what they had yeah, going on. Yeah, there was, there was a lot. It could have been worse, guys, who don't like Last Jedi. It could have been so much worse. <laughs> How much of the expanded universe did you read? Uh, I actually stopped after uh, the Jedi Academy series by Kevin J. Anderson in about 1994. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and love the new era of Star Wars canon because uh, Chewie doesn't get crushed by a moon where we are now. <laughs> also, they drink way less hot chocolate. Yeah, that's like, true. Way less. I had no problem with Lando teaching Luke hot chocolate, though. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Do you think Chewie getting crushed by a moon is the silliest thing to happen in the expanded universe? No, that's actually one of the more plausible and realistic <laughs> things that happens. Hey, here's an embarrassing thing about me. I'm 
terrible with decisions. I'm really bad at it. I spend way too much time weighing all the pros and cons of everything. Honestly, I'd be much happier if someone else could make my choices for me. And with food, at least they can with HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you'll get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Enjoy a wide variety of easy, delicious options for all three meals and every snack and special treat in between within the HelloFresh market. There's a lot of stuff to eat, and I know you're thinking, I can't eat that, can I? Yes, you can! HelloFresh's fresh ingredients are sourced directly from growers, delivered straight from the farm to your door in under a week, all contact free. Don't you want food to just magically appear for you? Isn't that the dream? And it's a better value for food. HelloFresh is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store, and 72% cheaper than getting a meal at a restaurant. And you're not sacrificing any quality. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Actually12 and use the code Actually12 and you'll get 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's right, 12 free meals and free shipping just by going to HelloFresh.com slash Actually12 and using the code Actually12. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Sailor Moon may be a teenager for most of the series, but thanks to time travel, we get to meet the daughter she had with Tuxedo Mask. Chibiusa, aka Sailor Chibi Moon, travels back in time from the 30th century to help the Sailor Senshi. She appears roughly five to eight years old and is crown princess of Earth. Eventually, we also meet her daughter, Sailor Chibi Chibi. Um, who is <laughs> Chibi Chibi is not her daughter. Depending on if you're reading the manga or if you're watching the anime series from the 90s, she is either Sailor Galaxia's Starseed, 90s anime series, or she is actually an incarnation of Sailor Cosmos in the manga. Who Wrong. is actually no, Sailor Cosmos? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's correct. That's a point. Uh, uh, Chibi Usa and Chibi Chibi, not Nothing related. To Nothing to do with her. Nope. Just, yeah, yeah. Nope. As a matter of fact, like, depending on some theories uh, on who Sailor Cosmos is exactly within the manga, she might actually be Chibi Usa's mom. Ooh. Because there's a theory that like that Sailor Cosmos is like a future Sailor Moon who's right. like living with all of these choices that she made. It's really beautiful. Are and any one of them clones? <laughs> yeah. No. The only thing, the only there are thing no I'm clones. About. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Like, Surprisingly I... few clones. Nope. I, I take that back. I was gonna be like, there's no clones in Sailor Moon, but that is not true because in the um, Black Moon Clan story arc, they do have clones of basically like there's a there's a scene where like they're trying to basically replace the senshi with like clone versions of themselves. Now that I'm saying this, I think that might only be a Petite Etrangere, which is one of these stage musicals. Oh, then she loses yeah, the point. She loses the yeah. adaptation <laughs> of that musical. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You said something wrong. That's like very specific. You said something wrong about the stage musicals. <laughs> <laughs> the stage, How dare you? I'm sorry. One of the like 25 Unprompted. stage musicals. You lose musicals a point now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, I mean, more correct than we were even looking for. Cool. So, yeah, certainly uh, one point for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, and, and beat Michelle to the... The you, fire you were in both, both of our eyes. We're just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like a pair of racers on the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clicker it, over it there, got but... real for a moment there. Yeah. Yeah. It got real. got real. <laughs> and this is our second shiny question of the game. This is a game called Fictionary. I'm going to give you a name of a creature or monster from folklore or mythology. It'll be up to you to draw it to the best of your ability. We won't be judging the quality of the drawing, but how accurate it is. Your monster is Casa Obake. <laughs> I know exactly what this is. All right, well, let's see what you got. Um, same as before, we'll go down the line. We'll start with Ken, and then we'll see how it, where, we, where we wind it's, up. That's probably a better idea to start with me, and I agree. <laughs> uh, it, it's a flying rabbit. I don't think you realized it was a flying <gasps> rabbit. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It's yeah, uh, and it's got an outfit on, and it's got a little, uh, little uh, saddle okay. where mm -hmm. Jon Snow could have used one for his dragon <laughs> yeah. and some wings, and... He's where very is... serious. He's dour almost. Yeah, yeah. Where are his arms, yeah. bud. Yeah, his, well, he's, his arms are. You know, <laughs> he's, he's got <laughs> wings. He's got wings. He's got wings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you need them to get around this world. I love imagining a creature that is a flying rabbit but mm. has no joy. Yeah. yeah, no, he's, he's got a job to do. <laughs> yeah. I'm a cuddly, adorable yeah. creature that can yeah. fly, and I just, yeah. I hate no. every minute of it. I think it looks it's like not a, a griffin fucked at who from who though. <laughs> 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 and it does. Well, on my next I page, I've I've drawn that as well. So. Um, well, that's. I think that's pretty far off from what we're looking for, but let's see how, how other okay. folks did here. Emma. 
Um, so uh, Casa Obake, uh, um, it's mm. an umbrella monster. No, nothing less. Um, it is uh, actually the, the my particularly looks like something you might have seen on a 90s episode of Sailor Moon. Uh, this perhaps would have been a student who uh, was very sad in the rain and had their energy drained by like the Dark Kingdom and got their soul replaced with something evil. Um, an umbrella? Yeah, it's like, it's kind of an evil looking umbrella. Oh. I gave him some teeth. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an umbrella monster. It's a living umbrella. Yeah, it is a living umbrella. Uh, yeah, there, there are some you know features here that I might have been looking for that you don't, or that you don't have, but oh. you've got the You've got the gist. basic gist that is umbrella monster. So uh, it'd be crazy of me to say like, no, it's not the right umbrella. Yeah. This should have been a cheap Dwayne Reed umbrella. And you put, uh, put a curly handle nice. thing there. Yeah, um, it's very good. It's a little witchy. Uh, Michelle, let's take a look it, at yours. Ours are almost the same, except you know what you're missing what? is a speech bubble. Uh, <laughs> indicating Ooh. how spooky it is. <laughs> so casa means umbrella. Obake means literally a monster, monster. or ghost. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in the, in the tradition of Japanese yokai, which are spirits or uh, ghosts, I guess, uh, there are a lot of inanimate objects that are made into ghosts, like umbrellas, mm. uh, a, a bit of toilet paper that one found once. Uh, oh. Just like little objects can become also ghosts. So this is very, it's exactly the same as Emma's mind is talking. Sure. Well, why don't we take a look at what, yeah, let's take a look at what Kaso Obake maybe looks like. Uh, oh, it's a foot! I needed I the sandal! The so I was looking for, I I was, added, if I had added a tongue, I'd be <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would have been closer. Yeah. He's got the if, foot! Yeah, like if you, if you erase half that face, it's mm -hmm. pretty close okay. to this. Uh, it's often sort of like one eye and the foot. Oh. Um, but, you know, but that's not, that's not all the time. So, you know, like the, the main thing I'm looking here was Umbrella, Umbrella Monster. Uh, um, actually, like that version is specifically from Gegege no Gitaro, and oh. there are versions that look that are similar, like without the shoe and with the shoe. Mm. And I understand. Um, cool. Yay. Well, uh, point for both Emma and Michelle. Hey, I know I pretend like I know everything, but I make a lot of mistakes too. If you notice something that I got wrong, you can correct me by tweeting at um actually show or by going to our exclusive Dropout Discord and correcting me there. If we like what you have to say. We might even feature your correction in a future episode. Cool. All right, here we go. In Tang and Tapakur and Logan, the evil Spiral King has four mecha piloting supreme generals. The Spiral King named each general for one of the four nucleobases of DNA, and like the king and his armies, they are all beastmen, human animal hybrids. There is Adiana, the elegant with a scorpion tail, Cetomandra, the swift who has a colorful plumage, Guam, the immovable, who is essentially a large talking armadillo, and Tim Elf, the crashing one, who is gorilla like. Um. Emma. Actually, a scorpion is not an animal. It is an insect. Insects are animals. Are they? Yes. <laughs> I'm going are to they? say, I'm going to very firmly, I'm going to, I'm going to plant my, I, I'm not going to be convinced otherwise on this one. Um, actually, the last guy wasn't gor gorilla type Pokemon. <laughs> he wasn't gorilla type Pokemon. <laughs> he wasn't gorilla boy. He was a different kind of boy. Uh, incorrect. But I would love if Pokemon added a gorilla type. Uh, Dang it. Um, actually, this is a, a wild guess here, but, yeah. but the king and his armies, they're not all beast men. That's correct. What? Oh! Uh, can, you, can you be a little more specific? I'm going to give you the point no, anyway. No, I cannot. That's what I was going <laughs> for with Scorpion, not oh, beast. Oh, because some of them are beast women. Well, uh, oh. Oh. But she didn't say I'm actually, so I yeah. still get the Jesus. point. I, specifically, what we were looking for is that the king, the Spiral King himself is not a beast oh. man. Um, okay. uh, Spiral King is a human who created beast and leads people. the beast men. So uh, that point will go to Ken. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Um, um, here's a question about uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. In the international release of Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, we see that Steve Rogers has a list of things he missed while in cryosleep that he'd like to catch up on. Here is that list. I Love Lucy, Moon Landing, Berlin Wall, Up and Down, Steve Jobs, Apple, Pisco, Thai Food, Star Wars slash Trek, Nirvana, Band, Rocky, Rocky 2, and Trouble Man, Soundtrack. Oh boy, it's one of those things that's on that list. <laughs> Ken. Um, actually, it's just Rocky. Uh, <laughs> no, incorrect. Um, actually, Thai food is on there. Uh, Thai food is on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it doesn't include Star Trek because Disney doesn't own the license to that, so they can't put that in their movie. That's an amazing guess, but that's incorrect. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, it's the Foo Fighters, not Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, we should have included the Foo Fighters on there. <laughs> yes. uh, that, that's incorrect. I'm going to go ahead and call it. We may not be able to guess our way into this uh, one. Okay. Uh, because uh, it's the, not a list. The problem was actually at the very beginning, I said in the international release of Mother Captain America. Oh too. my God. But, uh, but that list changed for every country that they released <laughs> yeah. it in. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so Smart. in the UK, Good. the Beatles and the World Cup are on the list. In no. Japan, it includes Dance Dance Revolution and Old Boy. Uh, and in France, uh. it includes The Fifth Element. Uh, so they sort of tailored that uh, list for the cultural touchstones for, for each individual France. country. <laughs> France! Uh, well, no points for that no. one, unfortunately. This is a game we're calling Once More Without Feeling. Uh, so I can do that. I'm going to read the lyrics of a song with as little melody, rhythm, or affect as I can. It'll be up to you to identify where it's from. In this case, we will be doing cartoon theme songs. These are all segments, theme songs to cartoons. Who's that coming from somewhere up in the sky, moving fast and bright as a firefly? Just when you think the trouble's gonna pounce, who's gonna be there when it really counts? Um, actually, this is the theme song for Mighty Mouse. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I was going there, too. Nice. And now I'm drawing a blank. Um, actually, is this part of Darkwing Duck that I don't know? Uh, it's not, though. No. Dang it. <laughs> uh, I know the pressure's on me to it's put you a guess can. out here. Uh, uh, Let's throw a wild guess yeah, up there. Maybe um, you'll actually, get... Actually, uh, I'm gonna make up a cartoon called Danger Cat. Uh, <laughs> Danger Cat! It is not, the fic it is not Danger Cat. Uh, this was Care Bears. It's oh. like Care Bears. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. I don't yeah. remember anything about Care Bears in the Sky, yeah. but here we go. Oh, man. Here's the next one. When you want to page me, it's okay. I just can't wait until I hear my cell phone ring. Doesn't matter if it's day or night. Pagers. Uh, Pagers. Um, uh... <laughs> Is Kim Possible? It is Kim Possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yes. That is oh, Kim good. Possible. Nice. Here's our next one. Disguises, disguises, surprises, surprises, and pies of, and pies of, all sizes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why is this so hard? <laughs> um, actually, this is Top Cat. Uh, incorrect, <laughs> incorrect. Only oh, cat cartoons you can think of. Yeah, Just yeah. cat cartoons. Yeah. I only answer in cat cartoons. <laughs> Um, um, actually, uh, it's um, uh, Rocco's modern, modern Life. No, it's not. Incorrect, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is a cat show. Oh. It's like Garfield. It is Garfield God and Friends. Damn it. <laughs> I was going to say that, but then I was like, no, I know all the words, and I don't. Yeah. Five o'clock, get a call to go blading at the skate park down by the mall. But my mom says, I got to prevent hostile aliens from annihilating us all. Uh... <laughs> Can. Uh, I'm actually Invader Zim. Uh, no. Um, actually, this is <laughs> Jimmy Neutron the show. <laughs> uh, no, no, that is that is my life as a teenage robot. Yeah, it's I haven't more, seen that one. It's a more current one. I've got my computer. I swing through the air. I play the piano, and I have blue hair. Me, I invent things. Me, 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 me. Um, actually, this is a version of Dexter's Laboratory where he has blue hair. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It feels so close. Alternate reality. Alternate reality, Earth, Dexter. Earth 200, Earth Dexter's 200. No, no. Um, actually, this is a, a new version of Johnny Quest uh, and Friends. <laughs> and Friends! Incorrect, incorrect. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually, uh, is, is it the Powerpuff Girls? Because uh, I'm no, just going to no. guess it is not the so Powerpuff I can Girls. learn the answer. Uh, <laughs> yep. This is Muppet Babies. This is oh. uh, a section of Muppet Babies. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Yep, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't have that tune. That's, like, that's like three years of my life. Yeah. College. I, I was thinking like years. blue hair, but yeah. it's like yeah. blue hair. <laughs> I feel like I've invested so much time into theme songs from cartoons that now they don't know anything. I don't know anything yeah, yeah. All that time in my life has been wasted. They're Muppet Babies, and they're making their dreams come true. Nice. <laughs> and why were they Dang doing it, babies. now I know we'll it's Muppet Babies, yeah. too. Uh, like, uh. All right, we've got one more all here. All right, here we go. <laughs> hate this here we go. <laughs> but we're the Misfits. Our songs oh, are better. Uh, um, actually, it's from Jem. Uh, holograms. Yes, correct. Jem and the Holograms. Why can't I get you? Um, why can't I get you? You say get you like five times. Yeah. Why can't I get you? Uh, well, that was uh, one for Ken, one for Michelle. Uh, so you both tie with yeah, the most there. Yeah, gotten that Garfield one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. really worried about that. I'm one. sorry, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, well, uh, one point then for both Ken and Michelle. Yay. Well, this is our last question of the game. All right. Uh, which, as always, concerns real life skills. Want to not frustrate your bartender? You probably know that ordering a drink on the rocks means it will be poured over ice. But if you order a drink up, that means you'll get a drink that has been chilled and strained into a glass, but no ice. And if you're ordering a drink with vermouth in it, like a Manhattan or a martini, and you ask for it dry, it will come with less vermouth than if you order them wet. Um, Michelle. actually, if you order 
dry, it'll come with more vermouth, not less. Incorrect. I was a bartender for like three years, and I just forget. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I'm, I'm a whiskey on the rocks guy, so right? I, I, yeah. well, you lost me yeah, after, after that. After on the oh, rocks, that. you're yeah. like, this is mm. too many terms. I ordered yeah. the whiskey on the rocks because it's easy to order. It's easy. <laughs> Once you work your way to the <laughs> front of the bar to club, that's all. Just yeah, give me you what can't. you got. We don't know anything. Yeah. Um, I failed um, at life. Actually, this is not right. A yeah. Manhattan doesn't have vermouth in it. Manhattan does have vermouth. It does. I know it does. I'm just yeah, don't I'm go down the path I did. Don't go down that path. It's the wrong path. <laughs> we'll go ahead and call that then. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll reveal it. So what I had said was, if you order a drink with vermouth in it, like a Manhattan or a Martini, and you ask for it dry, it will come with less vermouth. But uh, that is true of a martini. But if you ask for a dry uh, Manhattan, it's made with dry vermouth instead of sweet, oh, ver sweet vermouth in versus oh my God. The, the amount of vermouth. <laughs> so it is only true of one of those two drinks that I, I know mentioned. It. Oh, God. Very semantic. Hey, oh, um, uh, very, very semantic. I'm going to stick with my whiskey on the rocks. <laughs> yeah. There's, no There's no confusion there. Confusion you know what I want. Oh, yeah. no. Whiskey rocks. Well, that makes our final score 4-4. Five. Good for um, me. Very tight game. game. Yeah. Very tight game. And our winner is Michelle Wynn Yay. Bradley. Um, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you all for playing with us today, and thank, thank you, you yeah. for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Oh.